My name is Victor Puntes. Um, I'm working, uh, I started uh, applying nanoparticles. Um, and as we are in the field of nanotechnology, um, we have been, uh, it's very innovative. We are, uh, there is no regulation, there is no framework, there is a, a lot of uh, uncertainty about uh, the impact, uh, the uh, social impact, not only in the health and human health or environmental health, but also if we are going to change the rules in the world, if we are going to make life of, uh, of people in the third world countries even more miserable because we are going to impose a, a type of innovation where the machines, so there is a big barrier so, uh, to enter. So thinking about the consequences, we realize that we can, there is no answer for that, so we have to be ourselves to question how responsible we are and this and we have to be uh, um, aware of, uh, of um, the potential consequences of what we do as much as in the laboratory. So it's true that in the laboratory a, pri a priori we, we like to investigate more with more freedom because there is no consequences because the, the particle doesn't leave the laboratory. But then we realize that at some point if I'm working with a particle is because I have an interest that this particle has a use afterward, so it will get out of the lab. So I have to start thinking about being responsible when I enter inside the lab. I mean, if I'm going to produce this, it's like uh, people was producing cadmium selenide nanoparticles, which are beautiful for biolabeling, but the problem was the cadmium thing. So at the end, they are, will be never used in vivo because they are toxic, intrinsically toxic. So what's the point of developing a technology that will be stopped when you want to implement it? So you go in the you go to the, um, to the safety by design as a need to, uh, to develop things. So, uh, and even it's, uh, at the end, the question always when you propose uh, innovation to society, someone asks you, but this is safe. And then you have to, the only, the only thing that we can do is that we think before you. We don't know if it is safe. We have been, we have been thinking before you question. We have been looking for answers. We are working actively in looking in toxicity of nanoparticles in different environments, different nanoparticles with bias standards in different uh, chronic exposure, uh, acute exposure, cocktails of exposure. So we are trying to solve the question, solve the problem before it appears. And that's the only, the, 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 there is no, no one's know yet what's the potential impact beneficial or, or negative of the uh, nanotechnology. But at least we are trying hard to, before developing a product, ans uh, answering the question, well, these particles that we're going to use in the companies to, uh, to increase the production of biogas and biomethane, this in principle is good. Uh, the particles are non-toxic to human cells. We have done all the studies in vitro and we know about studies in vivo. These particles degrade during their use, so it disappears and become iron ions. These iron ions are found in soil normally. In fact, you are even producing a compost which is uh, rich in iron, which is a good fertilizer. So uh, we are trying to see that in the whole, in the, our product, when we use it, so the worker, we will never work in the powder form because the dry nanoparticles, you can breathe them, and even some of them are toxic or not toxic, you don't want to have little stones in your lungs. So we are going to work all, always in a in liquid phase and not pasty phase. So we are taking care of when we produce the particles, when we use the particles, the end of the particles to answer the questions about what are the potential negative impacts. Because we cannot go to the market and put a product outside there. I mean, it's simply, it's, 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 it's very egoist to try to um, to get uh, the thing right, because otherwise I, there is the case in, in Holland that we are proposing to make a nano coating of trains with Teflon, so it's water doesn't absorb, so they, they get clean, so you have to clean them less, so it's less money for clean them, less uh, uh, soap and detergents, which is, very, which is a problem, we are putting soap everywhere and it's not very healthy. So the solution was good, but was nanotechnology, and at some point um, the company said, no, we don't take the risk because people may not like it. So you realize that you have to explain to people what you're doing, you have to show people to be transparent. We are publishing our technology in journal papers that anyone can reach through the university maybe, or even we, had, we have something open access. So we explain our technology, so they can copy us, it's true, but at least we don't have a mysterious technology. We hope that we, we have the advantage that we know how to do it, is knowledge. We know how to do it better than you, so we don't care that you compete with us, because we started before. I mean, I've been 10 years doing that, 
when you start, I will be 10 years ahead. So still I have. So, but I, I explain openly my technology. You should know. And I worry about that more than you. And I make questions more difficult than ones that you make. What happens when you combine allergens and nanoparticles during a disease, in, during a crisis? In addition, you are weak with iron or you have a hyper iron in, in your blood. And this thing we are trying to, is the only way we have to, um, to, um, to introduce our technology in society. We need the society to embrace our technology. We cannot cheat society and say, no, no, this is good, and then see what happens. We have to say, no, we know, we understand your concerns. We start working on them before you even get concerned. And that's the information all we have. And this is our plan to, um, as, a, as a way to, to control the dispersion of the risk. First, you do it in a plant, a small one. You make your application, you see the consequences, you don't go too fast. Going too fast is not uh, getting a lot of money. Going too fast is not good. Simply, there's other ways of, go, of doing things. It's good to go, to go far, but even if you can go slow, it's much better than you. Going far is better, it's okay to, to get a lot of money, maybe. But if you do it better, even at the expenses of not getting so much money, it's good. It's good to do it also. Mm.